So for part B1 of this uh, exam, we have to derive the dif differential equations for the mole fraction of water vapor in air and the temperatures of the air in water in a cooling tower. So up here we have the cooling tower and we have our, temp our water feed going in, our water going out, our air going out, and we have the air going in as well as the gas flow rate, so the air flow rate. Then we have our direction of water, so the, uh, the top is positive, the bottom is negative, and that's denoted by Z. So the first part of the question is asking us to um, derive the differential equations for the mole fraction of water vapor and air. So in order to do that, we're gonna ask ourselves the question, how does the mole fraction of water change as it crosses through DZ? And DZ is uh, where our packing material is. And a, a little a over here in the middle is our specific area for DZ. So we're going to start off by saying the gas, fl gas flow rate divided by the molecular weight. Um, and so what that means is that the gas flow rate, which is in kilograms per meter, uh, Square divided by the molecular weight, which is kilograms per mole, um, that gives us uh, moles per meter squared. So, in order to uh, take into consideration um, area, we're just going to go ahead and multiply by area. Um, uh, area in which the water is crossing. So when we multiply our gas flow rate divided by our molecular weight by area, we get um, the number of moles of gas that's flowing through the cooling tower per second. And so now what we want to do, that's like the total um, flow rate for the whole system. But what we're really focused on is water. So we're going to go ahead and multiply it by y. And that's going to be our mole fraction for water. And this expression here will now give us the number of moles of water vapor that's passing through our packing material. And so now what we have to do is go ahead and consider um, the packing material itself. So at the saturated point of the packing material, let's just say the surface packing material, the packing material we have CI. And CI is right here at the interface of that packing material. And so what's occurring here is that the water is saturated to that point. And so we have to take that into consideration. Um, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and use the mass transfer coefficient, um, Kc. And we're going to equate Kc to the part of the expression that we already uh, created and we multiply Kc by the concentration, the difference in the concentration. So concentration initial minus concentration final. And the concentration final in this case, uh, our initial is going to be our interface that we just talked about and the infinity symbol is going to represent the concentration in the air, the water is going to, um, the concentration of water in the air. And since we're going to be using uh, this part of the equation for our further derivations. We're going to go ahead and simplify that and say that's equal to the molar flux of the water vapor, NW, times the Kc times C minus E infinity. And we could also say that the molar flux of the water vapor is equal to the mass transfer coefficient times the partial pressure of saturated water at Tw divided by RT minus uh, the mole fraction of water times the partial pressure divided by RT. And now going back to so, uh, deriving this differential equation, we're going to multiply this part of the equation by the specific volume, and then we're going to multiply that by the differential, um, differential volume, ADA. or DZ. And so now since um, our equation is fully written out, 
we can go ahead and say that the gas flow rate and the molecular weight are going to stay constant for this problem. And we're going to just say that for simplicity purposes so that we don't drag on our calculations uh, when we have to code it. So when we say that these two variables are constant, we can go ahead and write dy over dz is equal to uh, well, actually, there's supposed to be a negative symbol here um, because the positive z is here, the negative z is here, and we're looking at uh, we're going against the gradient. So we're going to say that it's negative uh, the, uh, the specific area times the molecular weight. Um, divided by the gas flow rate, um, G, and we're multiplying by the, our molar flux of the water here, and W. And this is going to be our first differential equation that we have to derive. So to derive our second differential equation for this problem, we're going to be looking at the temperature of water and the cooling tower. So when we're looking at the temperature of water, we're going to be also looking at the enthalpy of the water, the change in enthalpy of the water, DHW. And that's going to be equal to the area times the liquid flow rate per area times the heat capacity of the liquid water times the change in temperature of the water. And that whole part of the equation is going to be equated to the energy coming from the gas phase. So what we're going to do now is look at specifically the heat transfer. So looking at the heat transfer, we're going to, uh, we're going to have to multiply the specific area times the heat transfer coefficient, all times by the difference in the temperature from uh, and the of the water or the gas phase, uh, the temperature of the gas phase minus the temperature of the water, and we're going to be wanting to multiply that by the differential volume, A, D, Z, and um, what is going to occur is that with heat transfer, there's also evaporation. And with evaporation, that means that water is leaving. So in theory, the temperature of the water is going to go down. So we're going to say uh, it's going to be like the heat transfer is going to be subtracted by the evaporation. And so we're going to subtract that from the um, heat of vaporization, lambda, times NW, which we already defined in our first um, derivation. So NW, and we're going to be wanting to multiply that by the specific area, A, times the differential volume, A, D, Z in order to get the specific area that we're going to be looking at when we're calculating the temperature of the water, or the change in temperature of water. So, right off the bat, with this equation, we can cancel out the areas, because uh, it's on both sides of the equation. And now we can go ahead and manipulate this algebraically, so we can say D T W over D Z is equal to um, the specific area A, lowercase a, again, which represents the area, packing area, uh, divided by um, the liquid flow rate per area and times the heat capacity of the liquid water, A uh, L times C L, and that's all going to be multiplied by the heat of, I mean, the heat transfer coefficient times the temperature of the gas phase minus temperature of the water and we're going to be subtracting that from the heat of vaporization lambda times the molar uh, flux of the water uh, and multiplying that by or um, not multiplying that by uh, we already considered A so we're going to end the equation there and this is going to be our second differential equation which states the change in uh, the temperature of water over DC equals uh, the specific area divided by 
the liquid flow rate per area times the heat capacity of liquid water, all times by um, the difference in the temperature from the gas phase in the water, multiplied by the heat transfer coefficient subtracted from or subtracted by the heat of vaporization times the um, molar flux of water. So for the third uh, differential equation, we're going to be considering the temperature of the air, and that's going to be noted as uh, T G, G standing for air. Um, and again, for this, uh, since we're dealing with temperature, we should probably uh, look into the enthalpy of the air, and that's going to be equal to um, the area times the gas flow rate, uh, and that's going to be multiplied by the heat capacity of the, of the air, so Cg, and then we're going to be multiplying that by um, the differential, so the change in the temperature of the air. So basically, the same setup as what we did for calculating the or creating the differential equation for water. And then now what we're going to do is go ahead and add. Uh, we're going to be adding the um, water vapor. Uh, we have taken that into consideration when we're considering enthalpy. So we're going to go ahead and add the heat of vaporization times the area times the gas flow rate all divided by the molecular weight average. And since we want to mainly focus on the water instead of just the water and the air, we're going to be multiplying the uh, by y, which will be the mole fraction of water. And so that's going to be our enthalpy of air equation, changing the enthalpy of air equation. But an interesting thing is that looking at our packing, uh, we have water going out and air uh, going out in opposite directions. So, and we have dz here. So when we have um, these two, like we have the water flowing out uh, downwards and we have the air flowing out upwards, um, we're basically, uh, it's, it's counterintuitive. So meaning that the net in within the specific area A should be equal to zero. So net of packing is equal to zero. And since the net flow is equal to zero, that means that the heat of enthalpy the, uh, of water is equal to the heat of enthalpy or the enthalpy of the air. And since we're able to make that relationship, we can go ahead and set the change in enthalpy of air equal to uh, the change in enthalpy of water, dHw. And from our second derivation for our second equation, we have found already the uh, change in enthalpy of the water. So now we can go ahead and write out this whole uh, expression here. So what is it? A, B, C, D, So now, since we have written out this whole expression, we can go ahead and begin to make our cancellations. We can select the A's, the whole expression, and we're going to, for simplicity purposes, we're going to go ahead and say that our gas flow rate and our heat capacity of the air are going to stay constant. We're going to say this so that uh, it's easier to code uh, in our coding for this problem. And, um, 
we're going to go ahead now and divide by uh, dz. So we're just going to divide this and divide by dz. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So since these two are constant, uh, we're going to go say g c g d plus lambda g over d y d c equals um, this expression. So. So another relationship we have here is that dy dz is equal to the negative value of the specific area times the average molar molecular weight divided by the gas flow rate, all times by the molar flux of water, which we have all stated right here. And the way we have solved for uh, dy dz is from our first um, First thing, the first difference we uh, saw for, which is the mole fraction of water vapor and air. So we're going to go ahead and make that relationship here and plug that in. So A divided uh, by uh, B and W times W. Now, now, since we made that relationship, we can go ahead and cancel out all that stuff. We can, since our molar flux on each side of the equation, go ahead and cancel that out. We have lambda on each side of the equation, go ahead and cancel that out. And we have A, the lowercase a on each side of the equation, go ahead and cancel that out. So the specific area is also canceled out. Now, what we're left with is the uh, Gas flow rate times the heat capacity of water times the uh, change in temperature over dz, uh, which is going to be equal to our heat transfer coefficient uh, multiplied by the difference in temperature of the air and the water, or uh, yeah, the water. And um, we're going to now divide G, G over. And so D, T, K over D, D is equal to our heat transfer coefficient times change in temperature divided by the gas flow rate times the heat capacity of air. And this is going to be our third differential equation, which is the temperature for uh, air in a cooling tower.